Do you watch house flipping TV shows? Well, in this video, I am going to explore the question of whether or not it's helpful to watch those shows if you are a real estate investor or plan on becoming one. Hi, I'm Phil Pustiovsky with FreedomMentor.com. I'm a full-time real estate investor. It's been my career. I am coach and mentor to many of the most successful real estate investors across North America. I'm now a best-selling author of the book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. Thanks to you viewers, I've become a YouTube sensation, if you will, with millions of views on my YouTube videos. And this particular video is a bit interesting because I'm talking about uh, TV shows which have now become incredibly popular in regards to house flipping. Now, they actually were popular about 10 years ago when the market was booming, the real estate market. But then when the, the bust came and the market fell, uh, the show disappeared and now they have come roaring back. So, they are being watched and I hope in this video to share with you some insight that you may not already know about the real world of real estate investing and how that is different from what you watch on TV. Okay, so the first distinction I want to make, you already see those here on the board, would be entertainment versus education. I am going to say that these shows are not educational per se. I guess they would teach you what not to do. Uh, but they purely are more for entertainment. And that's what I'm going to break down here. So by entertainment, the first place that you see uh, focused where it's more entertainment than educational is in the world of rehabbing. So these shows are typically taking an ugly home and turning it into a beautiful home. And so there's the before and then there's the after pictures. And so what you typically see on these shows is this process of fixing up these houses and ripping things out and putting things in and dealing with contractors and oh there's an overrun here and there's a problem there and oh that's blowing the budget. Now I haven't seen all they, that many of these shows, especially the new ones, so some of this I'm just going off memory and uh, maybe there are some new ones out there that are very different, but the vast majority work in the exact formula I'm describing. And so that puts the focus of the show on the rehab aspect of real estate investing. And so if you were to do a pie chart based on the show, you would probably assume that the vast majority of all that goes on in real estate, this whole entire part of the pie would be rehabbing. But in the real world, in the real world, rehabbing is minor if you're a very successful real estate investor. Successful investors put rehabbing about right here. So just on the sheer volume of minutes that are spent in a show, the vast majority is spent in the wrong place. Rather than focusing on finding great deals, negotiating great deals with sellers, structuring it so you reduce the expenses uh, the maximum possible, doing the least amount of fix up, the most bang for your buck, and then resell it to the correct buyer, whether it's another investor, whether you're going to uh, sell it to a retail buyer, uh, a tenant buyer. That's where all this time should be spent right here. And so very little should be spent on this. And even furthermore, the actual concept of fixing up houses, that really isn't, doesn't play a massive role in real estate investing. It's part of it, but it's not a massive role because there's so many people that can fix up houses. So if you are watching that sh those, these shows and you are inspired because you want to turn an ugly home into a beautiful one, you don't need to be a real estate investor. Go get your contractor's license and become a general contractor. And you can fix up houses for a living. And you don't have to go through the risks and hassles of being an investor. Just fix up houses and make a, a portion of the overall budget that was set aside by that homeowner to fix up their house. So the first big problem, the first place where you go from uh, education to entertainment is in rehab and the focus that it puts on that. Now, that also brings up this. You only focus on ugly houses in these shows. Well, what about all the pretty ones? What about, like, say, this deal that I just closed on on Friday that earned me $24,135.76? Uh, $24, I made almost $25,000. I didn't touch the house. Never mind rehab it. I literally had uh, the front door and back door locks changed, put a lockbox on the front door, put a sign in the front yard, put it on the MLS, 
and I make $24,000. That's it. I didn't clean it. I didn't do anything else. Now, it was already a pretty home. The seller was completely motivated. They needed money fast. So why are the shows only focusing on ugly houses? Because it's for entertainment purposes. So this is not to educate a real estate investor on how to be successful in the business. It's how to entertain people. Now, this also means that it, it can create the over-renovation of properties. So I had this conversation with my contractor the other day, kind of a funny story. These, these two uh, women bought this house um, here in my area. They bought a foreclosure, and so they paid way too much for it. Uh, it was a home path foreclosure, so it actually had already been renovated uh, by the bank. However, it wasn't a full and beautified renovation. They just did the cheapest thing possible, cheapest carpet, cheapest paint, but it was renovated, so it could be rented out right away. Well, they over-renovated it. So they, the first thing they did, I think they had a couple beers, but uh, they got out the sledgehammer and they knocked out some walls. And as soon as they got done knocking out some walls, they did some stuff to the bathroom, this, that, and the other. When it was all said and done, they had created a lot of problems for themselves. Had they just left everything alone and just and maybe just repainted and put better carpet, they might have been able to resell for a profit. Profit probably not because they paid too much because it was a foreclosure. But um, needless to say, they created get this thirty-five thousand dollars in renovation costs. Because it turned out the wall they knocked out, although it wasn't a load-bearing wall, had all the electrical running through it and a bunch of plumbing, and they caused all kinds of problems, water damage, this, that, and the other. So when it was all said and done, new bathrooms, new kitchen, new this, they had put $35,000 into it, and they lost a lot of money on that. So they wanted to be like the house flipping shows. They wanted to get out the sledgehammer, and they wanted to knock out some walls. Speaking of which... Uh, another uh, actual client of, of my contractor, this was funny, uh, they had to remove the cabinets. And the, uh, the client, uh, the investor, if you will, had uh, gone in there to, to kind of watch how things were coming along. And he said, where's the sledgehammer? And uh, the, uh, the contractor goes, what are you talking about? He goes, well, well you said you were doing demo work today. Where's, where's, the, uh, where's the sledgehammer? He goes, oh, man, we don't use sledgehammers to remove cabinets. That's just on television. So... My little rule, by the way, is if you're ever picking up a sledgehammer, you're probably doing something wrong in real estate investing. Um, little known statistic, I, to the best of my knowledge, as far as all the other uh, deals that I split profits with in my apprentices across the country, I know currently, you know, me personally, the thousands of deals I've, I've been a part of, we've never knocked out a wall. We've never even gotten rid of a wall. We've never done any sort of transformation to any sort of floor plan. I mean, if a deal needs that kind of work, we just flip it to some other contractor investor buyer who wants to do that kind of work. So uh, it, it, it promotes over-renovation of houses, and we're seeing this all the time in the real world. Um, the next thing is the actual profits. In some cases, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Uh, you may already know this, but reality television isn't always 100% real. Sometimes things are staged. Sometimes the producers uh, create the alchemy so that the outcome is the way they wanted it to be, you know, such as where American Idol will bring it, will accept certain uh, candidates but not others, even if the ones they got rid of were actually fantastic musicians, because they want a mixture of different types of musicians on the show, right? Or I knew somebody that was on um, Amazing Race and they went very far into it, and uh, they told me some interesting stories about how the producers were able to slow down certain teams and, and speed up other teams, um, and so then there's the uh, there's you know, other reality shows like The Bachelor or The Bachelorette where uh, they try to get them pretty drunk before they turn the cameras and get those things rolling. So there are things that can be done to change the actual reality of these reality TV shows. And the same thing uh, could be said of these house flipping shows. Now maybe it's not that the producers get the investor drunk before they turn the camera on, uh, but uh, I, I did have an example, I won't use the, the show's name, but where the person that bought the property fixed it up and then resold it. And it turned out that some blogger had done their research, because a lot of this stuff is, is public record, and discovered that uh, if the numbers in the show were actually correct, that the person would have lost a lot of money. Uh, but what had happened was uh, the individual got a lot of the materials free because they were mentioning like the name of the window company, the name of the flooring company. So they were getting the, uh, the materials for the fix-up free because it was on television and they were able to get that um, those manufacturers of those materials were able to get that free advertising.
well, actually, wouldn't free the cost of materials, right? So some of you may say, well, okay, Phil, all right, I got you. So the majority of it's entertainment, but still, Phil, I, I can get some fix-up ideas. Wait a minute. If you're watching a show about a house that's uh, fixing up a property in, let's say, California or Las Vegas or Massachusetts uh, or, or, or Florida, but, but you're in Nashville or you're in Dallas or you're in Chicago, then those aren't ideas you want to borrow. I'll give you a great tip. If you want to get great ideas on what colors, what textures, what types of materials to use for your next fix-up, go to some local builders' model homes. Go to those builders' model homes and, excuse me, you want the, uh, the, whatever the price point that the property you're going to be flipping is at, that's the price point of the new home build you want to go look at, okay? So if it's a first-time home, home buyer kind of house, go to the first-time home buyer builders. If you're going to a much nicer builder uh, like with you know, a higher-end home and that's the house you'd be fixing up, go to those higher-end builders. Builders have spent tens of thousands, if not millions, with interior designers over the years to figure out the perfect colors, perfect you know, uh, balance between too cheap materials, too high materials. Builders have already figured it all out. And if you can find out where they bought their materials, the local Sherwin-Williams for their paint, where they bought their, their lumber and all that great stuff, you find out where all those have been purchased, you just go straight to the supplier of the materials and ask them what the builders are, are, are using. And they'll tell you. So if you want fix-up ideas, go look at some builders' houses. That's the answer. All right. I also want to um, add that uh, TV has a pretty strong influence on your brain. Uh, the first thing is studies have shown that television will actually uh, lower your overall brain activity. So it's actually, um, you get more, your brain is more stimulated, there's more activity in your brain when you're sleeping than when you're watching television. And when that happens, it lowers, and for lack of a better phrase, it lowers your BS meter. So your ability to tell uh, what I call um, signal versus noise. So when you're not, not only when you're tired, but when you're just watching the TV and you get lulled into the television, you're actually more likely to accept that message as truth, even if it's not. And you add to that if it's late at night and you're tired, and that even drops your BS meter even lower, which would explain why most infomercials are late at night. Because you're tired and it's television, it's two things together, you're more likely to get influenced. So I personally don't watch these shows. Um, I'm always a little bit nervous. What if I watch it and I get influenced to do something stupid? Uh, because the, the truth of what to be doing out there, you can watch and learn a lot from my videos and from my book and from my trainings, but also just being out there in the real world. And so if you trade that 30 minutes you were going to watch this show you want to watch, if you go hang out at a, at a model home of a builder, you'll learn a lot more than you would at, um, watching that television show. Uh, I know what you're thinking. Phil, you're just jealous because you don't have your own show. Well, let me touch on that real quick. Um, I have been contacted by many different producers, uh, casting directors on uh, being a part of, of one of these shows. And the first problem that we've always run into in talking with these people is they want to see these before and after pictures. And sometimes I have before and after pictures, but they're not always that impressive because I don't really do much. I mean, I'll paint, I'll carpet, I'll do a couple of cosmetic things. Um, but this doesn't make for good television. Making 24135 and 76 cents, but I didn't really do anything? That's not good television. I mean, if you put a camera on me and my actual investing, I'm staring at a computer uh, I'm not really doing much. There's no, there's no drama. And so the other thing about these shows is they're looking for drama. I don't want drama. I don't have drama with my team. I, I don't have drama at all with what I'm doing. Now, sometimes when you're dealing with a motivated seller, there might be a little bit of drama, as you've heard in some of my videos. But um, I find it difficult, and I think the producers I've talked to have found it difficult to figure out a way to legitimately get a camera on some of these motivated sellers. Because these people, a lot of them don't want to be in the spotlight. In fact, sometimes I get a good deal because it is there. there's a level of anonymity in working with me. I have a student who just got a deal under contract with over $120,000 in equity in it. And the seller 
uh, is in the real estate business and had been for many, many years, but they were they were in the capacity of like a closing company and they, they knew 50 different real estate agents that they could have listed the property with. The house didn't need work, so they knew it needed to be sold to an investor. But this is what they said to my student. They said, uh, any one of the real estate agents I've worked with for so many years, if they found out I was selling this home for this amount, they'd kill me. So please don't tell anybody. I just, I don't want to deal with the hassles. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings by listing with one person over another. I need to sell this fast because I need cash now. I won't drop the price. So how do you get a camera on that person? You don't, right? Because they're not going to agree to be on camera and, and, and basically film them uh, giving their house away. So we I've had trouble in, in, in connecting with these producers and whatnot about finding something that would fit. I did recently come up with an idea um, that they haven't taken me up on yet, which is, have you seen the show uh, Extreme Weight Loss with that Chris Powell, where he's basically a mentor to these extremely overweight people, and over the course of a year, they transform and they lose hundreds of pounds. Now, I like that idea for a show whereby I would work with somebody, put me in a, put a camera on me for a year uh, in this person that I'm mentoring, and let me uh, help them close a bunch of deals and make a bunch of money. Now, that might be pretty cool. Uh, the only issue I have with that, though, is the amount of time that it would take to, to actually produce this show, and uh, that would take time away from everything else I'm already doing. I mean, I'm answering hundreds of messages, uh, questions a day. I'm coaching people all across North America and mentoring them. So for me to kind of just chop off weeks or months at a time to shoot some television show. That's another thing that I really haven't uh, come to grips with as far as how the heck I would handle that because I love what I'm doing. I don't want to just jump ship from everything I'm doing and kind of tell everybody that I've been helping. Oh, uh, sorry, good luck. I've got this show to shoot. So anyways, am I jealous? No, 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 no worries. Now, uh, not all are these house flipping shows might be completely terrible. One example would be, although it's not a house flipping show, would be that show House Hunters, where they, they show them three houses and they choose one. That could potentially be helpful because it teaches you a little bit about buyer psychology. You learn what kind of attributes of a house buyers like and don't like because they'll walk through them and they'll tell their, their spouse what they like and dislike. Um, you can learn a little bit about their psychology and how <laughs> completely irrational they can be. You know, and they just make terrible decisions sometimes. So, House Hunters could be semi-helpful. Um, now, I, I want to hear your thoughts as well, because I probably missed some things here in this video. Uh, there's a lot more I wanted to share, and I really cut this thing down to keep this video to some reasonable length. So uh, make some comments below on uh, what you uh, like or dislike. If you completely agree or completely disagree with me, uh, maybe there is a show out there like this Extreme Weight Loss with Chris Powell <laughs> only for real estate investors where someone takes someone and transforms them into a, a very wealthy person uh, over a year's time after the, the, you know, investing in real estate. So, anyways, I, I thank you so much for watching. I'm Phil Pustiowski with FreedomMentor.com. If you don't already have it, grab a copy of my book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. Watch some more of my videos. Uh, dive into what I'm sharing if you're at all interested in real estate investing. Because uh, for Pete's sake, get educated. Know what you're doing before you go out there so you're not over renovating you're not making huge mistakes because of something you learned on a television show get out there and do it right or don't do it at all all right thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next video